In this video, we're going to talk about what machines are, what they do, and how they affect work and force in our everyday lives. All right, so a machine is any device that makes work easier. All right, so it, it will make work easier in one or more of the following ways. A machine can change the direction of a force that we put into the machine. So a good example of that is a pulley. A pulley is basically a wheel here that has a rope strung around it and basically what we can do here is change the direction of our force. If we, if we look at this diagram here we can tell if we pull downwards on one side of the rope the other side of the rope is going to go upwards. So we've exerted a downward force here but the pulley has changed the direction of that force to make an upwards force on the other side of the pulley. All right, so a pulley can change the direction of a force. This is called a fixed pulley here because it would be attached, you can kind of tell here, this little part here would attach to a ceiling or something of that nature. All right, so a fixed pulley is going to change the direction of our force. All right, another way that machines can make work easier is by changing the distance over which a force acts. All right, so the easiest example to think of with this would be an inclined plane, which is basically just a ramp. And we'll talk more about these different types of simple machines later. But a ramp, if we think about it, if we, let's say, have an object that we're pushing up a ramp, we've changed our height here, right? We, we started at ground level and we went up to this height here, right? But the ramp, because this is a right triangle here, the diagonal side of the triangle, or the hypotenuse, is the longest side of the triangle. So the, the distance here that we've moved the object is going to be greater than the distance that we would have uh, had, to, had to move the object over if we were just lifting it up straight without the ramp there. All right, so we're basically spreading our force out to push the object over a larger distance. So we're still doing the same amount of work because the object is going from point A to point B the same as it would have if we had just lifted it up without the ramp. But we're able to, because we're using a longer distance here, we're able to spread that force out and do the work uh, with less force because the distance is greater. And we'll talk a little bit later about how that works. So a force, or a machine, excuse me, can change the direction of a force. It can change the distance over which a force acts. It can also change the size of a force. All right, so a wheelbarrow here would, would be a good example of a machine that changes the size of the force that we put into it. All right, so if we think about using a wheelbarrow, if some of you have used a wheelbarrow before, this will seem pretty uh, intuitive to you. If we lift up on the handles here, it's not going to take as much force to lift this load up as it would if we were just trying to lift this, this load here without the wheelbarrow. All right, this looks like some heavy cement blocks or something. If we tried to lift those up, it would be pretty hard to lift. But with a wheelbarrow, we can lift a whole bunch of these without uh, really straining ourselves too much. All right, so the way this works is that the wheelbarrow has changed the size of our force. We can put in a smaller force here and get out a bigger force that we need to lift up an object that would be really heavy. All right, so we'll, we'll talk a little more in a bit about how that works, but these are the three main ways that machines can make work easier by changing the direction of the force, by changing the distance that the force acts over, or changing the size of the force. All right, so with machines, the, the, a couple of important vocab terms that we need to know here are input force and output force. And these are kind of self-explanatory self terms, almost, because input force is the force that you use on the machine. It's what you put in. And the output force is the force that the machine exerts due to your input force. So the output force is what you get out and the input force is what you put in. It's, it's pretty, uh, pretty intuitive there. So with the pulley, the example that we saw before, the input force here is what we pulled on, on the side of the pulley that we were pulling. This would be the input force. And the output force is the force that we get out of the pulley. So the output force here is the force that we said would be going up. And if we look at the wheelbarrow example again, the, the input force would be us lifting up on the handle here, and the output force would be the actual moving of the weight of the load that we're lifting with the wheelbarrow. All right, so the input force is what you put in, and the output force is what you get out.
So machines, though, cannot increase work. This is a very important concept to know. Machines cannot increase the work. So what the work that you put into a machine, it, you can never magically increase it to get more work out of the machine than you put in. If this were true, we wouldn't really need like gasoline to power our cars. We could just power our cars with a series of levers and pulleys and other simple machines that would magically give us more work than, than we put into them. Uh, but that just, that just isn't possible. So the, the work that you put into a machine will always be equal to or smaller than, and we'll talk about that in, in the next video about adva mechanical advantage and mechanical efficiency. The work that you put in will never be greater than the work that you get out of the machine. Or sorry, I, that is backwards. The work that you put into the machine will never be less than the work you get out of it. So you can never get more work out of the machine than you put into it, all right? So you can get more force out of the machine. This is what we talked about with the wheelbarrow example. We got more output force than input force, but you can't get more work. So it's important to distinguish these two concepts here. We can get more force out of a machine than we put in, but we can't get more work out of a machine than we put in. So let's think about that for a sec. If we know that we can have more force from our machine, but not more work, what does that mean in terms of uh, what we've talked about with the work formula and so on? So if you wanna pause the video right now and maybe think about this question for a little bit. If a machine can increase force, but not work, what else must change if the force changes? So if we increase the force using a simple machine, what else has to change here, all right? So pause the video, maybe think about this, try and come up with an answer for yourself and uh, come back and I'll give the solution. All right, so if you have paused the video and come back, the solution to this is, if we increase the force, the distance is what has to change. Based on the work formula here, if we can't increase the work and we increase the force, the distance has to change as well. All right, so we could think about this using the work formula here. Work equals force times distance. So we know if we wanna keep the work constant, we said we can't increase the amount of work, it has to be the same or less than what we put in. If we increase the force here, there's no way that we could also increase the distance and not increase the work, all right? So we said that increasing the work was impossible. You can't get more work out of the machine than you did put into it, all right? So if we increase the force and increase the distance, then that's gonna increase the work and that's impossible. We can't get more work out of the machine than we put in. So if we increase the force, you can imagine here, we have to decrease the distance, all right? So that if the force goes up, the distance that that force acts over goes down. All right, so we could also maybe try plugging some numbers in here. If we tried, let's say, uh, we, we were doing 100 joules of work and we were using a force of 10 newtons. Then we can tell here that the distance that that force would have to act over would be 10 meters. All right. So then let's say we, we have to keep the work the same. We can't magically increase the work. So if this is going to stay the same and we increase the force, let's say we increase it to 20 newtons, then what happens to the distance here? Well, if we solve this, the distance would then have to be 5 meters now instead of 10 meters. All right. So by increasing the force from 10 to 20, we increased the force here, the distance had to decrease in order to not increase the work that we had. You can't increase both the force and the distance, or we would have had more work than we started with, which again is impossible. So essentially here, we need to know that force and distance, in, in, the in terms of how they work in machines, force and distance are a trade-off. So a trade-off means something that's, that's a give and take, basically, where you get an advantage, but also a disadvantage. So th this is how machines work. If we think about the work formula, we can use a machine to increase our force, but we can't uh, use that force over as great a distance then. Or if we think about maybe we use a machine to uh, increase the distance that we, that we use a force over, then the force itself has to be smaller because we cannot increase both the force and the distance or else we would be increasing the work, which again is impossible. So just know that machines cannot increase the work that you put into them. You can only end up with the same amount of work that you put in or less than the amount of work that you put in. And we'll talk, we'll, we'll elaborate that on that a little more in the mechanical advantage and mechanical efficiency video. All right, so thanks for watching this video and I'll see you in the next one.